Hi everyone, Spider-Man 1991 here, and this is day two of my top five lists of Doctor Who. Um, pretty much every day I'm doing a video that lists my top five uh, subject-related Doctor Who thing, and uh, to, and I'm doing this in honor of the Doctor Who 50th anniversary, which will premiere this Saturday on B on BBC, whether that's BBC One, BBC America, wherever you live, it's all going to be simulcast at the same time, which is great. It's exciting. Really can't wait to see the see the day of the Doctor. Um, I'm I'm going to be seeing it in theaters though on Monday, uh, December 25th. So I'll probably be in an internet blackout. Um, yeah, so right now um, I'm going to be talking about uh, my top five Doctor Who companions. The companion is an essential role to Doctor Who. What the companion does is basically he or she is kind of the viewer um, looking into the that kind of looks into that's uh, kind of you know our viewpoint of what the Doctor is in, in a sense and you know as the Doctor and it's good that the Doctor has someone with him because he gets to it's not just that he gets to explore the universe but that he gets to share it with someone which I think is great it's something for his character it's really great for his character the Doctor and and you know there have been a number of companions over the years and I'm going to be talking about my top five but before I get into the to my top five companions um, I just want to say do an honorable mention first and that is for Clara Oswald Osmond Oswald um, pretty much I was going to put Clara on the list but then I thought about it and I thought um, you know she's only been around for half a season and yeah she did appear in two episodes in the first half of the series series but technically it was like some alternate version of her and and well you know Clara really hasn't been around that long even though I love her character I like Jan Louise Coleman it's just I feel like it's too early if you know what I mean so I'm sorry she wasn't on the list but I do like her and I was gonna put her on here I just felt it was still too soon all right now for the list top f number five Donna Noble Donna Noble it was pretty much the last companion, well not really last, but um, she was there before Martha Jones, but the last person the Tenth Doctor took with him before his regenerate, like took long term before his regeneration. Uh, although, for, although actually the Doctor did meet uh, Donna in the Christmas special that aired in between C Series 2 and C Series 3 where she mysteriously teleported on hit in his TARDIS on her wedding day and that led to a whole thing which led to the final destruction of the Rachnaz and then afterwards and then afterwards almost a year later at first Donna refused to travel with him but then she but then ultimately after a year she decided you know when she ran into the the doctor again she decided to travel with him and all and throughout the series Donna kept always told people like she wasn't she really wasn't special but in fact at the end of the series, she helped save the saved all of reality. She really did by hel helping to initiate the Meta Crisis with the Doctor's severed hand and creating the Meta Crisis Doctor. She also became a human. She also became a human time lord, and also known as the Doctor Donna. And you know, she helped the Meta Crisis Doctor and the Doctor save stop the re Dalek's reality bomb and save all of reality, which was very impressive. However, as a consequence of that, uh, Donna ha Donna's mind had to be erased because her brain was still human and could handle all the knowledge of a Time Lord. So the Doctor had to erase her memories and then leave her back at home with her grandfather and her mother. And at that moment, the Tenth Doctor, and it really left the Tenth Doctor heartbroken. Um, all right. But but Donna was great. I liked her. The I like the whole back and forth she had with the she had with the the tenth Doctor. It was funny seeing those two talk. Also, whenever they went somewhere and they introduced themselves, it would be all, there would always be an assumption like, wait, are you two married? And they'd be like, no, no, <laughs> no. Which is always funny. And and you know they had great chemistry. Like not romantically, but just as kind of like two best friends in a way. So that's why I like Donna, and she's on my list. Um, all right, number four, Captain Jack Harkness. Yep, the yep the bi the omnisexual time traveling time traveling cop from the future. Um, yeah, so Captain Jack Harkness was introduced in series one 
when he met Rose Tyler and the Ninth, Do Ninth Doctor during World War II, or more specifically during the London Blitz, I believe. And after, after they managed to save the day, the Captain Jack decided to travel with, with the Doctor and Rose for the remainder of the season, which was only a couple of episodes, until um, when they led to the final conference, when they were led into another fight with the Daleks and Rose became Bad Wolf, she, Jack was killed, but Rose restored her life. But it was too much, and it gave, and it gave Jack um, immortality. Well, not really immortality. He became more. He actually became a fixed point in time, which allow, which meant he never died. He, he can never age, and it really freaked him out. Uh, he tried to find the Doctor again. But he, when he tried traveling back with his vortex manipulator, he overshot it and wound up uh, about in the 1800s, I believe. It was either the 1800s or the 1900s. No, actually, it was the 1900s because they said it a hun hundred years. So, yeah, sorry about the confusing dates. Anyways, Jack, Jack was sent back to 1900 Cardiff. Uh, he got um, eventually he got got work work work. He decided to work for Torchwood which was an alien hunting group on Earth. Uh, he worked for them, and eventually, though, he did become the leader of Torchwood 3, but uh, that's actually a whole other story, and the Doctor Who spin off Torchwood. Eventually, he did meet the Doctor again during the Doctor's 10th incarnation when he was traveling with Martha Jones, and he, fl and he was also featured in the, C the finale for C Series 3, and... But ultimately, though, when he had the chance... But ultimately, though, the Doctor couldn't really find a cure for Jack. But Jack was fine with it. Uh, but Jack, but you know, I think Jack, Captain Jack, is a real great character. At first, he started out like another companion, but then eventually, he got his own spinoff. He's became such an exciting character that he can stand on his own, where he didn't need the Doctor anymore. And you know, it, it's great. And he was really awesome. He was like sort of the opposite of the Doctor in a way. Uh, the Doctor, he's think first. Uh, he's a planner. Jack, he's more of a dashing man of action. And also, it is funny seeing of how he flirts with everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm serious. He almost flirts with everyone he meets, which is always funny the way he introduces himself flirtatiously. <laughs> I, mean, it, I mean, Captain Jack is really funny. He's you know he's the dashing he's a dashing hero and also he's a character that started out as a companion but then eventually forged his own in a way forged his own path with Torchwood. So yeah, that's why I like Captain Jack and he he's definitely one of my favorite companions. Even though he wasn't technically a companion for that long, he still uh, showed up in Doctor Who for the series three finale and the series four, and he did have a cameo in the end of time. So still a big deal. All right, next up number three. Rose Tyler. Rose Tyler. She was the first companion, the, the the Ninth Doctor's first and only companion. The first companion, I believe, the first companion he had since the end, since the end of the Time War. So Rose and Rose's relationship with the Doctor was started off with a very strong friendship, I think, at first, but then. Uh, eventually, when he regenerated it into the Tenth Doctor, their relationship became a lot more romantic. And but ultimately, though, and for, but ultimately, though, Rose t Rose was trapped in another dim became trapped in an another dimension where her father was still alive. And but it was a dimension without the Doctor. But then two years later. But then, when she returned for the series four finale, and the Doctor decided to leave the Meta Crisis Doctor on that Earth, she, you know, she decided to have a relationship with him because he was like the tenth Doctor, but he could not, he couldn't regenerate. He aged, so they could. That was actually a Doctor he could have, she could have a relationship with, because that was one of the reasons why the Doctor, even though he he loved her. Um, they really couldn't have a relationship because he's a time lord. She, he doesn't age. He doesn't die. He regenerates. Uh, Rose, she's human. She would eventually grow old. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of tragic. But ultimately, though, they both loved, they both loved each other. And they both, and they both really did appreciate their time for each other, for one another. And 
And also she did, meh, she did merge with the Time Vortex and stop the entire Dalek fleet. And also she did, she was kind of like help, helping to lead everyone to the uh, whole uh, Dalek reality bomb thing at season series four. And, you know, I think Rose really did become a strong, really big part of the Doctor Who, Who universe. I mean, yeah, so... Rose and Rose is so popular enough that she's the that she's basically the companion from the ten, from the tenth Doctor era that's returning for the fiftieth. Can't wait to see what see what brings Rose back into the game. All right, number two, Amy Pond, Amy Pond, the girl who waited. She she's the first companion of the eleventh Doctor, played by Matt Smith. Um, Amy Pond will, <clears throat> when the Doctor first met Amy, she was. Little Amelia, an eight-year-old girl who just noticed that a rag who noticed a raggedy man in a blue box crashed in her backyard. Well, not really in the backyard, into the shed. Uh, I, I think uh, details. Anyways, um, eventually Amy, eventually uh, the doctor promised Amy he would return in five minutes when his TARDIS was still be sort of being repaired after it crashed. But unfortunately, that fi five minutes to him was actually 12 years for her. So when he met her again, she was in her 20s, all grown up, but she never forgot the doctor. She never forgot the raggedy man. <laughs> and and I would say Amy and the, doc, and the 11th doctor had a very nice friendship. They both cared about each other greatly. In fact, they cared about each other so much that it was often, I think people like thought that Amy would choose the doctor over the love of her life, Roy Williams, but Ultimately, Amy still chose Rory. She would always choose Rory. In fact, when, in fact, uh, that's kind of like what when Amy left, she pretty much had a choice. She could either be with Rory and never see the Doctor again, or go with the Doctor, still see the universe, but never see Rory again. And but ulti I mean, ultimately though, Amy did like having the Doctor again. Um, he was her imaginary friend, but ultimately, though, Amy, Amy had to grow up, and and at the end, the girl who waited became Amy Williams, and you know, unfortunately, they did leave. But it was, I mean, it was sad seeing Amy leave, but all, but you know, it was a good ending in a way. But but it was still a good yet tragic ending. Um, yeah. So Amy, and also Amy's character, she was always feisty. She didn't, she really spoke her mind because the doctor, he always said, bow ties are cool. And Amy would like always say, no, not really. <laughs> really. So that was kind of a, so that I always liked the whole back and forth between companions. That's between the doctor and, the compa and his companion. That's, that's always fun to see. And like, I mean, the doctor will say go left and his companion will say go right. Um, <laughs> It's just really funny, funny to have that, and I think Amy really did help sell that. And she was very interesting, very kind. You know, but ultimately she did leave, and I think, and you know, obviously Amy's still in my mind because she was the most recent right before Clara. Clara, so yeah. But still, Amy's a great character. Um, I think a lot of Matt Smith fans of the Eleventh Doctor would agree that Amy's awesome. Uh, okay, so my no all right now it's time for number one. My number one favorite Doctor Who companion is Sarah Jane Smith. That's right, uh, Sarah Jane Smith. I, the reason why she's my favorite is because she's used in both both the classic Who and the and the uh, and the modern Who. She's pretty much the bridge between the two eras. And you know what? And they did bring and they brought her and when. When it came time for ser season series two, uh, Russell T. Davis had an idea, decided to bring her back, which you know I think really helped the show because because I think her presence on the show when Elizabeth Sladen reprised the role again for for an episode of Doctor Who it really helped you know tell fans like you know this is real like this is connected to to the classic era of Doctor Who this isn't just going to be like an alternate timeline or something this is still all within one era. Or one universal timeline. Anyways, um, yeah, but Sarah Jane Smith, um, she was great. I mean, I saw her. I was curious. I mean, when I saw that episode, I was curious. 
it started to spark my interest in some of the classic Who episodes, and I decided to go back. I watched all of her episodes uh, on. I found all of her episodes online, and it also and watching those episodes sparked my interest in the Third Doctor and the Fourth Doctor. So, you know, big thing there. And also her, and also she just come back alone. She also brought back K9. I really should made K-9 an honorable mention. Sorry, but, okay, fine. K-9, honorable mention, but back to the Sarah Jane Smith. Uh, Sarah Jane Smith, she was great. Uh, very, she was great. Um, she was she was a journalist, so she was always looking for answers. Um, yeah, I just really liked her. And, you know, it, and she was so popular enough that they actually decided to make a spin-off featuring her, and Sarah Jane returned once again for the series four finale, and also the also a brief cameo at the end of End of Time. And unfortunately, though, the Sarah Jane adventures ended when Elizabeth Sladen passed away due to cancer, and that was very sad. I I actually was it was like maybe for me I mean it was like almost a year since I had gotten into Doctor Who, and I was starting to watch all the. Sarah Jane episodes, and then I hear that she's gone, and I was just very sad for a while, and, but, you know, I picked it up again, still watch Doctor Who, and, you know, but, you know, she still lives, but, you know, her memory still lives on through Sarah Jane, and, um, but, yeah, Sarah Jane was a great companion, my, Obviously, she was great in the classic era, and she was all, and she's also great in the modern era. So, to be able to live that, I think to be able to live that, to have that much of an impact on like both eras of the show, um, is very is very awesome, and that's why she's my favorite companion. Okay, um, yeah, so that's it for my uh, top five Doctor Who companions. Uh, who are your favorite companions? Please comment below. Uh, also, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you want to see more Doctor Who videos, uh, subscribe. Thanks again for watching. I'm Spider-Man991. See you later.